afternoon and welcome to State News File. I'm Chelsea Tomasek. Ali Kovacevic will have sports coming up, but first let's check in with Kristen Fong with the weather. We've had some really nice weather over the past couple of days and today was no exception. We reached a really nice high of six, but the wind is picking up. You can feel it in the air. It's getting a little bit colder and plus six isn't that nice compared to the record high back in 1981 when they reached a high of 15 degrees. That's like spring weather for Calgary. We're expecting a little bit of snow in our future, but I'll be getting into that a little bit later on. Thanks, Kristen. Ali, what's coming up in sports? We got a lot of Trojans action going on. And for the NFL, we got some big games this Sunday. So I'll get into that later on. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Now let's take a look at today's top stories. An investigation looking at a stolen BMW turned into one of Alert's largest fentanyl seizures. A joint investigation between Alert and Calgary Police led to the discovery of the stolen car, as well as eight varying drugs and cash. Troy Durrell reports. Alert and the Calgary Police opened an investigation in early January to try and find a connection between stolen vehicles and drug offenses. The investigation concluded last week when a man was arrested allegedly using a stolen vehicle in relation to a fentanyl trafficking operation in Calgary's Riverbend and Mountview neighborhoods. So what we did see is we saw a spike in our methamphetamine seizures, heroin, fentanyl, drug-related issues. All those drug-related issues and ultimately property crime going up because those types of crimes are used to fuel the, the, uh, the funding for uh, drug-related uh, addictions and crime. The search yielded upwards of $75,000 worth of drugs, including just over 1,800 fentanyl pills, 130 grams of cocaine, 48 grams of heroin, more than $100,000 in cash, and a stolen 2016 BMW. Uh, it's a large seizure first. I mean, it's our sixth largest fentanyl in the, uh, seizure in the province. It doesn't look like much when you look at it, but you think of how many lives we potentially save by taking those products off the street. We don't know the, uh, the toxicity level of any of those drugs, so that alone, we've, we've potentially saved lives and uh, uh, prevented other crimes from happening too. 25-year-old Leslie Ma and 24-year-old Annie Vo have been charged with a total of 22 criminal offenses. Members of the public who suspect drug or gang activity in their community can call local police or contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. For St. News File, I'm Troy Durrell. Calgary police are searching for suspects after several shots were fired in the Kensington area last night. One bullet happened to travel through a restaurant wall. One witness said she heard four gunshots as she was walking to, to an LRT station. The shots were fired in an alley near 10th Street and 3th Avenue Northwest. A bullet hole was visible in the Bodega Restaurant sign. No injuries have been reported. The triple murder trial of Douglas Garland continues today in Calgary and a couple forensic experts took the stand. Garland is charged with three counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of five-year-old Nathan O'Brien and his grandparents, Alvin and Kathy Lickness. An expert locksmith was called to the stand after CPS discovered drill marks in the deadbolt on the side door to the Lickness home. An estimated 50 witnesses are expected to take the stand, and the trial is scheduled for five weeks. North Okanagan, B.C. and Shuswap area are up in arms following two avalanches officials are saying were caused by new snowfall and warmer temperatures. News Files' Cassandra Stefanik has more on the story. Cassandra, what happened out there? Well, uh, Avalanche Canada has issued a warning to individuals who might be heading up to the mountains. Backcountry skiing, snowshoeing, and snowboarding are not advised um, as the weather has cooked up a likely avalanche condition. Um, parts of the Trans-Canada Highway and uh, the Kootenay Pass have been closed for avalanche, er, for avalanche control. Um, the warning also includes areas like Vernon, Sycamuse, and Revelstoke. mean trouble. For adrenaline seekers and devout backcountry enthusiasts, the risk may not be enough to keep you off the hills. Being prepared is extremely important. Arming yourself with, with information and knowledge of being able to read terrain, being able to look at websites, and there's so many different uh, resources out there and guidebooks to tell you wh where the safety area, wh which trails are safe from out. Good in the last 15 years. In the worst case scenario, 
proper equipment and education could mean life or death. Approximately 15 lives are lost across Canada from suffocation or trauma caused by avalanches every year. Staying safe might mean carrying a couple extra pounds of equipment or even taking a class. There's a few places that offer different safety courses uh, through the University of Calgary. Um, you know, NASCA does another one. It's all through Avalanche Canada. An avalanche can occur almost anywhere at any time if the weather conditions are just right. Luckily, Mother Nature has made it easy to identify some more. You can look at the, the vegetation, the trees. So in, in our mountains here, we're really blessed we have lots of trees. So if there's trees that are very mature, they're, they're 100, 200, 300 years old, then you can make a pretty good calculated decision that avalanches have not occurred there. Very so much like crossing the street, something that should be as dangerous in theory, looking both ways, and in this case, equipping yourself with proper gear, a little research, and listening to your gut will assure a safe and mountainous adventure. Cassandra Stefanik reporting live from State's Newsroom. On that same topic, Penne, Italy was hit by a massive avalanche that covered a mountain hotel, leaving 30 people missing. Rescue workers reported no signs of life after searching for hours. Finally, three bodies were recovered, only two alive. Guests at the Hotel Rigo Piano alerted emergency crews of the disaster following a series of quakes in the region. Some texts informed them about the damages, while others wrote saying, help, we're dying of cold. It isn't immediately clear if the quakes triggered the avalanche. The Calgary Zoo has announced the investigation following the deaths of seven penguins is now finished. Officials say it was, exhausting, it was an exhausting case that unfortunately couldn't find an, any conclusive cause, but the zoo will be changing how it cares for penguins in back areas of the penguin plunge. The changes include restricting access to pools in holding areas without staff, setting a max capacity for the number of birds allowed in the holding areas, and ensuring continuous ambient lighting at night. Christmas is long over for another year, and now it's all about the bills. January is the month for the highest credit card debt, and for students, food is one of the big expenses. Many students find it hard to put effort into bringing a packed lunch to school, but as Brianne Smith reports, that simple step can really pay off. The whole time I'm here, probably at least a grand, at least a grand, maybe two, depending, lunches and suppers, yeah. Spending roughly 10 to $20 a day, you would get a lunch and one or two coffees, depending on your favorite places. That's more than $50, no more than $100 each week. Now compare that to the amount of money you can spend shopping at a grocery store and packing a lunch. It's quite the difference. If you think you're too busy to go to the grocery store, that isn't an excuse when you can order online and have it delivered. So what are their reasons? I just don't have time to pack a lunch in the morning. Yeah, coffees every morning. Especially from being out of town, it's hard to do pack a lunch depending on your accommodations. There are microwaves in the majority of buildings around campus to heat things up. And if you want to bring something cold, don't forget an ice pack. I like to pick up pizza here just because it's one of the cheaper things that I can get here. Um, I also like to bring some of my own stuff, like you don't think I can sandwich, like a Michelinas that I brought from home. Estimates show the average student is $25,000 in debt after going to school, and some of that is just money spent on food. Many students we've talked to use their card more than cash. Does this allow for excess spending when you don't see the money coming out of your pocket? There are many tips and tricks not only around campus but in the community to help students who want to put themselves on a budget. For State News File, I'm Brianne Smith. Two graphs were released showing better than any other the state of Alberta's economy right now. One shows the price of oil plummeting since 2014. The other shows how many Albertans are relying on employment insurance, which comes as a shock. Almost 97,000 people in the province were getting regular income benefits through EI in November 2016 alone. That number is up 3.4% from the previous month and up 57.4% year over year. The University of Calgary and the School of Public Policy collaborated with the Canadian Observatory on Homelessness and the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness to better define what ending homelessness means. News Files' Megan Brennan has more. The notion of ending homelessness has increasingly shaped public policy, but without a common definition, 
measuring progress across the province is difficult. Ending homelessness is almost never meant literally, but when people hear that other cities have achieved it, they feel like their city has fallen behind. I think as far as housing is concerned with the mustard seed, the drop in center over here and stuff, I think they're probably doing everything they can. Between the launch of that initial paper, um, and Elena Turner and the research team at U of C is trying to develop a new definition using the terms functional zero and absolute zero. Functional zero focuses on the prevention, while absolute zero focuses on the true end to homelessness altogether. Rather than opposite concepts, functional zero describes progress towards an absolute zero, which Turner believes is very achievable for Calgary. For sure attainable is functional zero and a functional end to homelessness, where we have a system in place that's super efficient and it gets people out of homelessness and into housing with supports that they need to stay there. Last year, Calgary provided over 3,500 individuals with housing and supports, moving closer to functional zero. It costs two to three times less to end homelessness than it does to manage it. For State News File, I'm Megan Brennan. Premier Rachel Notley has shuffled her cabinet. She held a swear-in ceremony at the government house in Edmonton. Two MLAs that have been sworn in are Leduc Beaumont, MLA Shane Anderson, who will be a part of Minister of Municipal Affairs, and MLA Irfan Sabir has just been sworn in as Minister of Community and Social Services. Notley last shuffled her cabinet in February 2016. It's been a busy couple days in U.S. politics, especially for President-elect Donald Trump, who will be inaugurated tomorrow morning. Everything begins today with a wreath-laying ceremony at the Tomb of Unknowns, followed by an appearance at the Lincoln Memorial. His extensive history in management has inspired another TV businessman, Canada's Kevin O'Leary, who announced he would be running for the Conservative Party yesterday. However, some Canadians have noticed some similarities between the two and think Canadian politicians will take a similar approach in their campaigns. In the sense that both are provocative people that were on TV. Yeah. And that's about as far as it goes. But we like making those comparisons. He has not been uh, on some of the immigration issues like Kelly Leach has, but it appears that there's a number of conservative leadership candidates who are trying to implement what, what Trump did in a very different political culture, in a very different party system. The inaugural swearing-in ceremony begins at 11.30 Eastern Time tomorrow morning, where Trump will take the oath of office and make his inaugural, inaugural address to the American people. Those are today's top stories. We'll have your full forecast for you after the break, but first, Kristen Fong has a look at what's going on around Calgary this week. Check out the Big Winter Classic where 60 bands are showcased at three local bars. Shakespeare's lesser known tragic comedy is taking place at the Vertigo Theatre. The production is a part of High Performance Rodeo and tickets are $30 to $35. Witness the beauty of the mountains from right here in Calgary at the Banff Mountain Film Festival. Short films of mountain adventures are being showcased at the University of Calgary. Juliet and Romeo is decidedly Jazz's first production of the 2016-2017 season. Go to decidedlyjazz.com for more information. Simple Packing Tape is creating art in a public space. Hashtag Box Tape is a free art show in Calgary at noon in the Plus 15. Today is the first day of the annual Ice Magic Festival Ice Carving Competition. Tickets are available for pre-purchase online. We're here to work together to make a positive difference in our community, to have fun, to help make a real change. We're here to help the homeless who rely on the mustard seed shelter and food services. With the help of the meal sponsorship program, you have the ability to help someone in need and make a meal that will brighten their day. Visit theseed.ca to find out how you can start making a change. The mustard seed, building community, growing hope, supporting change. I have a lot of talents. I can eat a lot of pierogies. Grow like a pretty good beard for my age. I play the ukulele. I have many talents. But mind reading isn't one of them. Thinking of nine? Ten. Not a number, eh? No, nope. can't do it. If I want to hook up with someone, I ask for it. Because sex without consent is sexual assault. And nobody is a mind reader. So ask first. 
Welcome back to St. News File. So we've had some really nice weather in Calgary the past couple of days. Last night, I even went down to Olympic Plaza with my cousin to get some skating, and we were not the only ones there. If you are planning on going outdoor skating this weekend, though, definitely check out the conditions. With that warm weather, some of the outdoor rinks and lakes aren't so safe to skate on. But first, let's take a look at the national weather. So over actually on the west coast, Okay, we'll start with the East Coast. So in Toronto, it's got four degrees. Um, it's a little bit of precipitation as well. And as we move further east, it is just gonna get colder and colder. Montreal has some flurries as well as Halifax, but they're at zero degrees, so it might be a little bit wet out there too. St. John's is sitting at minus two, but they do have some uh, sun in there as well. As we move on to the West Coast, Vancouver and BC, they're actually having a low pressure system go through. They're getting some typical rain and they're actually sharing that rain with Edmonton. Edmonton does have a nice high of five degrees though, so it's not too cold for mid-January. As we move further east, Regina is sitting at minus four with a little, or just clouds, and Winnipeg is actually at zero with a little bit of sunshine. Speaking of sunshine, let's take a look at the resorts. Palm Springs is dealing with some rain today. Barbados is still warm in the high 20s, but you may need a raincoat in the afternoon. The clouds are visiting Cancun, Honolulu, and Orlando. It's still nice and warm though, so no need to worry. However, Vegas is sitting at a chilly 13 degrees. Today in Calgary, like I said, it was pretty nice. We reached a nice high of six degrees, and today is as warm as it's gonna get. As we move into the weekend, it's just gonna get colder with maybe even some flurries, but first, let's take a look at the Alberta map. So up in Grand Prairie, there are, they are getting some precipitation and some freezing rain, so it is chilly. As we move up to Fort McMurray, they're actually getting some sunshine, so take in that Fairly high, I guess, temperature for Fort McMurray of zero degrees. As we move down through central Alberta, like I said, Edmonton getting a little bit of rain, but temperatures are still above zero, so it's not too bad for mid-January. As we move further down into the south, Medicine Hat, Hat is sitting at eight degrees and Lethbridge is at six. And if you're looking for snow, definitely go to Banff. The slopes are gonna have some fresh powder there. But first, let's take a look at the five-day forecast. So like I said, today's the warmest it's going to get. Tomorrow we'll reach a high of 3 degrees and then after that it's all downhill. We're going to get into the negatives and Sunday we might even get some flurries. So definitely bundle up. Speaking of snow, let's take a look at a ski report. Sunshine received 8 centimeters of fresh powder overnight. All 12 lifts and over 120 trails are open. Nikiska is machine groomed but they haven't been graced with some snow for the past 10 days. It is sunny though, so take your pick from the 76 open trails. Kimberly is also machine groomed and received four centimeters in the past 24 hours, adding to that 127 centimeter base. Big White is living up to its name with 13 centimeters of snow overnight. The slopes have fresh powder and are machine groomed. 115 trails are ready for business. Lake Louise received 13 centimeters of snow, but the snow is variable out there. Watch out for some ice patches, but it's a pretty nice day to hit the 135 open trails. Panorama has been receiving a lot of snow over the past couple of days, making the snow nice and powdery on the slopes. Definitely a good time to check out those slopes and winter sports. Speaking of sports, Allie, what is going on? Well, next week marks the third annual Make Some Noise for Mental Health campaign. The initiative aims to end the stigma surrounding mental health, especially in student athletes. As Kendall Robertson reports, it's okay to speak up. Make some noise for mental health! One in five Canadians will experience a mental health problem or illness in their lifetime. Student athletes aren't exempt from that statistic. The Make Some Noise for Mental Health campaign aims to spread awareness and end the stigma that comes along with discussing mental health. I think it shows that uh, that we can also speak up too if we're having issues because as an athlete we're supposed to be strong and you know be in the spotlight. Athletes are commonly asked about their physical health, but what about their mental well-being? And we just felt that, you know what, we needed to maybe talk more about mental health and just really taking care of each other a little bit better. And in those conversations, we, we sort of said that, you know, there's probably more we can do with our student athletes. We 
always focus on their physical side, but we don't really say, how are you doing? How's your classes? How are you doing with, um, with maybe stress that's going on right now? Since its creation in 2014, the campaign has taken over all 17 ACAC schools and even won the Lieutenant Governor's Circle on Mental Health and Addiction True Imagination Award last October. That really made us happy because we were excited that we're obviously on the mark and we're doing something that is helping with people that are involved in that on a day-to-day -day basis. We're the, the athletics. We get to you know have games and, and work with student athletes and to have recognized by that group was really amazing. Make some noise for mental health will kick off next Monday with a variety of events throughout the week. Although the stands are empty now, next weekend all Trojans games are free. So make sure you come support SAIT, but most importantly, make some noise for mental health. For SAIT News File, I'm Kendall Robertson. Hopefully the men's basketball team is going to transfer the momentum they had a couple of days ago into tomorrow's game against the Lethbridge Kodiaks. The Trojans are returning from their 17-point comeback against the Red Deer College Kings last week. After that game, our team moved up to seven wins and two losses. State sitting at third in the South Division, and Lethbridge is right above them at second, so we can expect a close game between the two teams. The women's volleyball team will face the Red Deer Queens tomorrow on our home turf. The women's team is on a 13-game win streak, going 13-3 so far in the season. Red Deer has won their last eight games and actually have the same amount of wins and losses as Sate. Both teams are trailing behind BC in the ACAC standings with just one match lost against Sate. The Sate women's hockey team is getting ready for a pair of games this weekend against the Grant McEwing Griffins. The team is just one step behind the Olds College Broncos at fourth place in the standings and with eight games left in the season, every game counts. The Trojans have improved their scoring since the beginning of the season and are looking to outwork the Griffins this weekend. Better. So in the first round of eight, we won one game. Second round of eight, we were 500. And so we're looking for the third round of eight to come out at least 75-80%. You can catch the women's game at the Campus Center this Saturday evening at 7. Looking at the world of hockey, the Calgary Hitmen are prepping for their game tomorrow against the Victoria Royals after their win over the Red Deer Rebels yesterday. The last couple of games for the Hitmen have been close. Before their game against Red Deer, they were looking a little rocky against Prince George and Saskatoon. So far, the Hitmen are third in the Eastern Conference. For the Western Conference, Victoria is at 24 wins and 18 losses, leading that division. The Flames are hitting the ice tonight at the Saddle Dome against the Nashville Predators. Hopefully, Calgary is going to transfer the momentum they had from the Panthers game over to tonight's game against Nashville. The Flames have been looking a little rocky these past couple of games, but that's the thing with our team throughout the season. You don't really know what to expect. The Predators are coming back from their loss against the Canucks, but before that, they were on quite the streak winning their last four games. Right now, the Flames are sitting below the San Jose Sharks at fourth in the Pacific Division. Looking at the Central Division, the Predators are behind the St. Louis Blues at also at fourth. There's a lot of NHL hitting the ice tonight. The New York Rangers will be facing off against the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Air Canada Centre. The Ottawa Senators are in Columbus to go against the Blue Jackets, and Colorado will be hitting the ice in Anaheim to face the Ducks. And the Tampa Bay Lightning will also be playing the San Jose Sharks. Every week we're getting closer to the Super Bowl, but before that are the NF AFC and NFC Championships. Happening this Sunday, Green Bay has been a very versatile team so far, but so have the Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons have one more win over the Green Bay going into the NFC this Sunday. Kickoff for the NFC starts at 105, and for the AFC, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going up against the New England Patriots later in the afternoon at 440. So be sure to watch both games as the winners of these two championships will advance to the Super Bowl. Looking at the AFC side of the standings, the Patriots are sitting at 12 wins and two losses. And in the North Division, the Steelers have more of a rocky finish going into the championships with 11 wins and five losses. For the NFC, the Packers are just one win under the Falcons with 11. Those are today's top stories. After the break, we'll look at Fitness Week here at State.
It's a way for kids to stay in shape without having to take the break. As if I'll be able to go. The Cinderella Gown Project provides graduation dresses and accessories to high school graduates in need through generous donations. Will you pick up the wand? Visit our website to find out how you can help. I have a lot of talents. I can eat a lot of progies. I grow like a pretty good beard for my age. I play the ukulele. I have many talents. But mind reading isn't one of them. I'm thinking of nine? Ten. Not a number, eh? No, can't do it. If I want to hook up with someone, I ask first. Because sex without consent is sexual assault. And nobody is a mind reader. So ask first. This week, why not lift something that isn't a textbook? State Recreation knows the cost of living in tuition can often mean an hour at the gym or a weekly fitness class isn't a realistic expense. Cassandra Stefanik reports on the benefits of sweating out that second semester stress. Until January 20th, students can drop in, pump some iron, and blow off some steam without breaking the bank. Weekly fitness classes can easily cost hundreds of dollars a semester, but for the next seven days, State Recreation is offering free classes and even prize giveaways. Throughout State's free fitness week, students can attend unlimited classes held throughout the day. People who want to sample our classes, maybe try something new, we have um, a bunch of classes at lunchtime and then after school or work um, where they can come in for free and try out and see if they like it. The benefits of being active go well beyond physical health. It's really important to take care of your mental health. It's just as important as your physical health. And the two are intertwined. So um, we feel that our classes give students that opportunity for an hour out of their day just to take a time out and just de-stress. On-campus recreation is convenient and nurtures a healthy school life balance. So while it's free, students who may be looking for a commitment can try before they buy. Um, well, it gives them an opportunity to see different classes if they like it or not. You know, if they don't have a free class, some people might not be interested in joining it. But if they have a free opportunity, maybe they might like something that they sign up for. Class attendance during Fitness Week have increased significantly since last year, regardless of the economic downturn. Whether it's a new year and a new you, or you're just looking for something to do, State's Free Fitness Week will benefit your mind and body, all while complementing your bank account. For State News File, I'm Cassandra Stefanik. We all love to pet animals, from dogs to cats, even goats and llamas. But would, but would you pet a golden eagle? Yes, this bird is cuddling up with its owner and enjoying some belly rubs. It's not known how they were able to get the bird on its back, but he doesn't seem to mind too much. That's it for today's stories. On behalf of Ali Kovacevic, Kristen Fung, myself, and everyone here at St. News File, have a good afternoon.